Hi everyone, welcome to KBC Home Church Online. My name is Elliot, I'm the Senior Pastor at Kalgoorlie Baptist Church. We're thrilled to have you here with us today. We'd love to welcome you to our church in the WA Goldfields. If it's your first time, we are thrilled, as we said, to have you joining us. If you've been with us throughout this season, we're so delighted that you've stuck with us. And we believe that uh, God is blessing us in ways we wouldn't have expected during this time. By the way, uh, if you've been with us during this season, I know you probably much prefer my better half, Sandy, my wife, uh, who normally welcomes you to our services on Sunday morning. But Sandy is having a well-earned uh, respite <laughs> um, with family. I'm sharing her with our family down in Perth. So she's having a well-earned break uh, doing that. How has your week been? It's wonderful to be able to get out a bit more, isn't it? Um, but we realise not all of you are able to yet. And so if there are still struggles in that area that you feel the frustration of being cooped up or uh, not able to move freely, please don't hesitate to keep in touch with us. At the end of the service today, uh, you'll see that there's ways to make contact with our wonderful leadership team, our diaconate and uh, our um, ministry team here at KBC. Please reach out and send prayer requests through to the KBC leadership team if you need prayer. Uh, don't forget to uh, view from your pew is the hashtag. We'd love to see where you're watching from. Today's call to worship is from Psalm 103. In fact, it is Psalm 103. I'm going to read that psalm. And if you're not really feeling uh, up to worshipping today, open your heart as God speaks through his word in Psalm 103. And I am sure you'll be ready to praise his mighty name with all you have tonight. Psalm 103 of David. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, who, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. 
Praise the Lord, my soul.
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less. My hope is built. but the restrictions are lifting which is super exciting and we will be opening up again so keep an eye on our Facebook page and our emails and we will keep you in touch with what's going to happen next super exciting times see you soon
can't see a thing. Oh no. Oh. Where's my torch and my batteries? I never have anything but flat batteries in my torch. Oh no. Where are you? Where are you, Hector? Hey, hey, that's me. Oh. Hey, stop poking me. Whoa, what keep, are you doing? Keep your social distance. Well, I couldn't see you. <clears throat> Have you got a remedy? Well, where do you keep the candles and the torches and the lamps? In the top drawer, ready for a blackout. Oh, we could go get them, I guess. Let's do that. All right, just wait here. Hurry, I'm scared of the dark. How's that, Hector? Is that better? Well, thank you, Hope. I'm much happier now. I really appreciate you. I got a camping light and a candle and some solar lights from the garden. Thank my garden. They're pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah, your garden that you planted last week. With my bulldozer. Yep. Yeah. So, the thing about lights, Hector, is that they need power. They do? Of course they do. Yeah. They don't just go on by themselves, you know. Nope. This camping one needs batteries. Uh-huh. And the solar power gets... Light gets powered by the sun. Into the batteries. And the candle gets powered by the match. No batteries. Nope. In the Bible, it talks about us being like a light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. How can we be like a light? Well, we are like, we have Jesus in us and he helps us shine. We shine for him. And the Holy Spirit is the power that helps us shine for Jesus. I have to say, I have been a lot feeling a lot lighter in my soul since I met Jesus. Yeah, that's great, Hector. That's what he'll do for you. And you can share that with other people too. When we are light in the darkness for Jesus, then the whole world is brighter. That would make them feel better too. Yeah. Maybe they could cope better with what's going on. That's right. So we can be filled each day with the Holy Spirit and then we can be empowered to shine for Jesus. I was just getting a top up from the Bible where the lights went out. Yeah. Well, Pity didn't have a Braille Bible. Or an illuminated Bible. Yeah. Well, you know, I've got a song, Hector. Has it got a light in it? It has. It goes like this. This little light of mine, I'm the light it shine. This little light of mine, I'm the light it shine. This little light of mine, I'm the light it shine. Hello and welcome to communion today. Uh, before we uh, go into communion, I, I just want to uh, have a, a talk about the word we, we read in the Bible. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And I just want to talk briefly about that word, remember. Uh, in English, the word remember 
we take it to mean that we've forgotten something or we, we recall something that we've forgotten. But in Hebrew, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Um, and in the Old Testament, the word remember actually had a lot more meaning than that. The word in Hebrew was zakah. And the word zakah doesn't mean to recall something. It, it can also mean to bring someone to mind and to act on their behalf. Uh, for example, it talks about God remembering Rachel, Rachel one of the child. God remembered Rachel and opened her womb. It talks to about um, Joseph saying to the, the cupbearer, remember me to Pharaoh. The word he used there was zakah, remember me to Pharaoh. When you get back into his court, means to bring me to mind and act on my behalf. Similarly for Noah, it said God remembered Noah. Uh, when I was a child, when I'd read that, that verse about God remembering Noah, I'd picture God sitting at the table just maybe putting the finishing touches on a, a kangaroo or something he was creating and thinking, oh no, I forgot about Noah. Oh, hang in there, Noah. Docking in three, two, one. No, that's not the remember. It, that what it means. It's not about forgetting. God doesn't forget. But he brings us to mind and acts on our behalf. That's what he was doing when he came to earth to die for us. He was bringing us to mind and acting on our behalf. So I want you to bear that in mind when we're doing our communion now, to think of that word remember, the word zakah. As we do communion today, we read from uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, Paul was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, reading from verses 23 to 27. So 23 to 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So, the bread, we remember the body broken for us. Jesus it says, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. A symbol of Christ's body broken for us. Just moving on now to verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We take the cup, the symbol of Christ's blood shed for us. And in remembrance of him, think of that word remember, that we bring to mind our Lord Jesus Christ and that we act on his behalf as he acted on ours. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for sending your Son. Lord Jesus, you came not because you had to, Lord. You were under no compulsion. You came because you love us to pay that price. Holy Spirit, you dwell within us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice for us. May we always remember, may we always zakah, as we look forward to your return, in your precious name. Amen. Welcome to Friends Over the Fence.
having no play dates. Hmm. Not having school holidays? <laughs> it's been pretty full on. Yeah. Uh, the most pleasant surprise has been the Anzac Day dawn service on the street. We mm. had a really good turnout in our street mm. and then followed by a social distancing breakfast afterwards, which was wonderful. Oh, awesome. Having no sleepovers. Girls Brigade, Boys Brigade. Grandma and Granddad. Grandma being able to see Grandma and Granddad. Nice. Um, so I started a Bible uh, study course, mm. um, which it, it's really helped me to actually, when I read the Bible, what to look for and then to what, like, what to actually research further mm. to start to see links that I didn't really see the first time I read through. Mm. Nice. Um, so in amongst the readings, I've gotten up to Jeremiah chapter 4. Mm. Um, now, I can't quote it off by heart, and it goes for quite some time, but uh, uh, basically it's about getting rid of idols and things that are in the way uh, that get between us and God. Mm. Um, now, it's talking from a nation perspective. Um, you know, as a nation, the king back then, you know, they get rid of the idols and stuff and turn mm. back to God and then then see what happens. Um, and so, yeah, I've been using that a bit over the time, just trying to find things in my own life and, and around the house and mm. uh, they get in the way. Unfortunately, I can't kick Bunnings out. That's still there. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if that gets in the way of God or not. It might be ordained, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for watching Friends Over the Fence. You may have noticed there's been some terrible news coming from the USA, horrible scenes uh, that were triggered by the very cruel and unjust uh, death of George Floyd. And the charges have now been upgraded to murder for that police officer responsible. It's really lifted the lid on injustice not just in the USA, but across the globe, where protests have now been sparked, even in Europe and here in Australia. It's just really awful to see this. And the question I have is, is there a place where justice for all is guaranteed? Is there somewhere where this happens? And look, I'm not a fan of Metallica, and they're most likely not a fan of me either. Um, but uh, they're very gifted musicians and they have a huge following. They brought out an album years ago titled And Justice For All. And that title actually comes from the Pledge of Allegiance, which is something that was generated in the USA. But the Pledge of Allegiance has now been adopted by a number of nations around the world. The Pledge of Allegiance reads like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we've been looking at the Psalms and the Psalms are proving to be a very uh, helpful avenue for that, that search that is going on to find meaning in this time uh, of the coronavirus pandemic. And this week we're looking at Psalm 103, another Psalm of David, who is definitely one of my favourite songwriters. I am a fan. And of course, being the Old Testament, along with the New Testament, written by human beings under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And in this Psalm 103, which I read at the opening uh, at the call to worship this morning, David identifies four ways where we can grasp hold of the compassion of God, where we can observe the compassion of God. 
where justice for all is guaranteed. And that place where justice for all is guaranteed is so closely tied in with the compassion of God. Our God is a compassionate God. The first way where we see that our God has compassion is that David declares that our God has compassion for every individual on earth, everyone he has ever created. Reading from verse 1, David wrote, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Did you hear that right there? The Pledge of Allegiance has borrowed from Psalm 103, where justice for all is guaranteed. The second way that David uh, tells us of the compassion of God is where he shows us our God has compassion for every one of his followers who struggle on the way. Let's not judge our brothers and sisters in Christ who are doing it tough, who are battling. At least they're on the right road. How about we give them a hand up instead of kicking them when they're down? Let's give them a hand up and walk with them along the road. Our God has compassion for these brothers and sisters. And this compassion goes way back, as David declares. Verse 7, He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Where is this place where justice for all is guaranteed? The third way that David explains to us how our God is a God of compassion is our God has compassion for every one of his followers who obey, serve and glorify him. There are benefits from obeying God, serving and glorifying. I'm not saying that that is the way to salvation. But David declared, didn't he, earlier on, forget not all his benefits. There are benefits from walking in line with God's will and God's call on our life. David wrote, verse 13, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. So where is this place where justice for all is guaranteed? We know it's not the US, but we know it's not Australia. Yeah. We, we know it's not even in our relationships. Should we try for justice? Absolutely. We should give it everything we've got and try our best. But let's not be under illusions that any man or woman in this life can bring justice for all. But there is a place where it is guaranteed. The fourth way that David writes of is where he says, Our God has established compassion from his throne. That is the guarantee. God's throne, that place in the centre of the universe, 
where God has established his rule. And David wrote in verse 19, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. So where is this place where justice for all is guaranteed? This place is God's throne. And there is a day coming that is known as Judgment Day. And the scriptures speak very clearly of it. Now, the whole concept of Judgment Day is a terrifying one if you don't know the Lord, if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you do, and I implore you to, to seek this relationship and receive this gift of eternal life. If you do have that relationship, and I, I can guarantee that there is such comfort in knowing that when the judgment day comes, justice for all is guaranteed. And what is the ultimate guarantee for our eternal future? It's that Jesus has paid the price for all our sins, every sinner. And we all come to the cross as sinners. And it's the work of Jesus, his blood shed for us, and that he conquered death and sin and he rose again in victory. It means that we walk away with our sin burden taken off us. And we are declared saints, saints um, in the righteousness of Christ, Christ living in us. This is where justice for all is guaranteed. The most unjust thing in history happened to our Lord Jesus Christ so that there could be justice for all. I'm going to close this message right now with a prayer. And it's a prayer inspired by the compassion of God. And if you have a heart to see compassion uh, real in, on this earth and in this life, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. He is a compassionate God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, be the Lord of my life who works righteousness in me and uses me to stand for justice and against oppression. May your love, which is as high as the heavens are above the earth, overflow from my life to others who need it. May your forgiveness, which is able to remove our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west, overflow from my heart to those who cause hurt to me. May your everlasting love and righteousness, which are with those who fear you, always remain with my family and our generations to come. Help me to always keep your covenant and remember to obey your precepts. In the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Keep holding on to that promise and that hope that there is a place where justice for all is guaranteed. Well, we really hope you enjoyed being part of our online worship service here at KBC this morning. Thank you for joining us. If you have any issues that seem to have come to light, seem to have stirred up in you as a result of uh, what you've uh, experienced this morning, then after I say goodbye, you'll see a slide come up where you have details for how you can contact us and we can talk about it. We will certainly listen and encourage you and pray for you. There's still time to join our Zoom after service foyer get together. Uh, just let me know that you uh, want to be part of it. You'll see my contact details there. Send a message, give us your details and you will be able to join us in our virtual foyer on Zoom. Well, we hope you have a fantastic week ahead and remember there is a place where justice for all is guaranteed. Seek Jesus and he will 
show you where that is. Goodbye.